Hello everybody, it is December the 6th, Sunday night, and this is our weekly leader Zoom. And tonight we have got the very, very lovely Ruth Tate training on things that you should be consulting your clients about regarding pregnancy. So things that you can take throughout pregnancy, things to avoid, and not just for your clients, for yourself or your friends and your family, people that you know as well. So this is going to be a really, really interesting call because this is what gets asked the most about our products that we can and can't take throughout pregnancy. So it's a really, really hot topic that we need to really be, be on the ball on. So I'm really glad that Ruth offered to train on this. And with her being blooming pregnant at the moment, she is the mm -hmm. best person for this. So without further ado, I will now hand over to Ruth to take the training for tonight. Um, hi everyone, um, when I started researching this I realised this is a really difficult and grey area um, because nothing including prescription medication have ever been tested in pregnancy and, and breastfeeding women because it's unethical to test so a lot of things are unlicensed. Um, so everything I'm going to talk to you about are just ideas and ways to advise, um, advise people but I would always say to speak to a doctor or a midwife and always whatever products you're talking about just Give them the meet the product information and just so you, you're basically covering yourself and you're letting them make the informed decision. So firstly, when I was in the first trimester, a lot of nausea um, and I craved a lot of carbs, a lot of bad food. So what I did to supplement my diet is I used the, the Greens Balance. I don't know if anyone's ever seen this. Um, just one scoop, which is one serving. You can put it in a shake or um, some water. And, and it's part of um, the one serving of your five a day. There's lots of essential vitamins and minerals in there, 37 different fruits and vegetables. Um, it has lots of greens, kales and spinach, which is 14% of, of the iron that's a recommended daily allowance, which is really good for, for pregnant and breastfeeding ladies. The thing you do have to watch with the diet um, is the vitamin A content, and this is really good because there's only 0.2 of a percent of it. So it's a really good, um, really good thing to try. Um, next, I was looking at the herbal infusion tea. Um, I would say to use this in moderation, but it's really good because it's got, not got any caffeine in, which is really important. Um, during pregnancy, the gut motility will slow down, which will often cause uh, constipation. So in this is the licorice, um, which is a good laxative and also um, helps with heartburn that I suffer from and um, urinary tract infections. Also the peppermint in there will help with memory problems for so those baby brains and potentially some nausea as well. Um, it also contains parsley which uh, has got folic acid which again is good for pregnancy and helps just with the immune system because the immune system does take a bit of a knocking during pregnancy. Um, it encourages digestion, so again, the, gut, the slow gut motility. Um, I'd just be careful with lot, lots of amounts um, of it because of um, an increased blood pressure. But again, it's a small amount in these teas, so they should be fine. And it, as I say, everything in moderation. It also has um, elderflower and fennel, which again are good for constipation, um, flatulence, so those fragrance poo particles, which we do a lot of, and um, an iron supplement as well. Um, so these are little, I haven't actually got any of these, but these are little tea bags. Um, they're just little sachets um, just to make like ordinary tea. Um, so also when you are pregnant um, and also breastfeeding, your immunity is lowered. Um, so you, you can get poorly more easily. And there's a lot of medication out there you can't take, a lot is off license, etc. Um, so I would Suzanne says she's loving the tea, so I haven't actually tried it myself. Um, it? No, I've not tried it. No, <laughs> I've been really funny. I've you been said. really funny throughout this pregnancy with my food, which is unlike me. Um, and no, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Suzanne says she's not pregnant. Um, the paracetamol you can take, but in low doses. So I think really. Um, <laughs> I think really the um, the antioxidant and the immunity support would be really good for a good boost if you are poorly. There's only 20 milligrams of caffeine in it. Um, pregnant women can have up to 200 milligrams a day. Anything over 100 I think is a little bit um, suspect, but 
you know, they'll be fine to have this. Um, oh, so just be careful. Please. Sorry. How much, um, yeah. how much caffeine can we have a day? Sorry. So pregnant women are 200 milligrams of caffeine a day. Okay. That's what, that's what they say. I think, I mean, myself, I, I just cut out caffeine completely. And I think a lot of pregnant women do. So they're always very careful of the caffeine content. You will find a lot of caffeine in foods, drinks, even chocolate, etc. So it's really important to keep your caffeine um, intake down where you can. So as I was saying, there's only 20 milligrams in the, um, in the antioxidants. And it's just um, one 90 mil pouch per day. They come in packs of 24. I don't have any myself, but these are what they look like, if anyone can see. I love they also yeah they also have milk thistle in them which can actually improve the flow of breast milk um but as i say again everything in moderation and just take for a few days while you're poorly just to help boost you a little bit um the next horrible pregnancy thing is stretch marks um we if we're looking to help with the stretch marks we want the stretch marks to still be pink not white if they're still pink then it means we've got a good uh, blood flow still to them and you know there's something we can do about them the um, the fc5 conditioning oil i don't know if everyone's seen that i love this stuff um and it's really good to use on those little stretch marks um it's designed to hydrate condition and soften and what it'll do is just even out the skin tone while soothing the area. I mean, I've had um, a scratch that I use it and my scar's gone down um, through using this as well. So it's really good stuff. Um, prevention wise, a lot of water, steady weight gain and a good diet are, are the best things to use. Uh, but uh, if you want to condition your body as well, then either the FC5 conditioning body moisture the RE9 hydrating body lotion, they're both brilliant. They're both really good at moisturizing. Um, but I found what's really good, and I've run out until tomorrow, is the Shea Butter Hand and Body Lotion. So this is for very, very dry skin. And what it does is moisturizes and conditions. It comes in a little pump like this, if everyone can see. Do you want me to get my one? Yeah, if you've got it. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Uh, I thought you were going. Do you want me to get mine? <laughs> yeah, and then I sent Ian. Ian, Ian, go and fetch it. <laughs> um, what this is very good. At, what we want to do is just hydrate the skin while it's uh, while it's stretching and keep it nice and moist. And this will help help everything stretch and just make sure that we try not to get as many marks as we can. Really, this is the one. Which I, I was really shocked by this because Ruth went through this training with me the other day. And when she said that this would be her top recommendation, I was like, really? This is a hand moisturiser. But actually, it's a hand and a body lotion. Yeah, yeah. The shea butter is really, really good. It's really hydrating. And I, for myself, you know, I found that's, that's the best one. Um, so during pregnancy as well, you know, you're going to get a lot of aches and pains. Part and process, I'm afraid. So a lot of hip and back ache, um, and the gelée, um, people have found a very it's very good for growing pains for children. Um, so along those lines, you know, that can be good for achy or restless legs. Um, also, hot flushes. So when we get the hot flushes, the inside of the elbows, behind the neck, and on the palms of the hands, um, it can be really good just to help um, help us through those times. Um, careful not to use it all the time though because of the algae content and I will come to that part in a minute. Um, this is what the, again, what the gelée looks like. And I know you use it a lot, don't you, Danny, on diff with different things? I do, yeah. I use it on myself for headaches, migraines. Ian uses it again for the restless legs, muscle, muscle ache. Yeah. Um, my children yeah. both are in pains. Yeah, it's probably yeah. our most used product in the household. Yeah. Yeah, it is really good for all, for all this achiness. Um, so going on with that theme is the feet as well. And I found this this little baby is great. Husband does me um, some lovely foot rubs. And using this, it's the FC5 foot cream. And what it does is really cools and comforts tired and achy, swollen feet. Um, and it really does. It, it really just helps cool down and just... And just um, 
that makes you feel better. And I've actually found it actually helps me sleep if I have a good, nice foot rub with this. That's why I keep telling him anyway. Um, oh, <laughs> also, the, um, the Digestion Plus. Um, people have said that, yes, yeah, that will help constipation. I've not found anything to say that it, it's bad to use in pregnancy, but I would with this just seek the doctor's um, opinion first. And they come in little sachets, just like the fizz sticks do, um, and it's just one of those a day. Um, also, I found for, you know, you do get very tired and it's a lot on your body. So, me especially, I get a lot of dark circles and, and tired eyes. Um, so, the RE9 eye cream obviously is really good for that. Um, now, fizz sticks is quite a common question as to whether we can use these in pregnancy and breastfeeding and what i found is to use them with caution really use them with caution again as i was saying it's it's 200 milligrams for the daily allowance these actually contain 55 milligrams of caffeine um, and the guarana gu i can never pronounce this guarana so it, it can be used you know for those late nights uh, when you're up all the time breastfeeding um, but what you do have to be careful of is it can cause sleep disorders with your baby um, because it, it can transfer from you to baby. You know, still when you're breastfeeding, whatever you're taking in, your baby's going to be taking in as well. So if you find you, that the babies are restless, um, then I would advise to stop because it will transfer to baby. But a good thing that Danny came up with is, is to, if you are going to drink them, if you find you really just need that top up, um, is to drink them just after you've fed. So just after you've fed your baby. So it's got more chance to get into your body rather than transferring straight to baby. Um, lethargy and tiredness is, is, you know, if you're okay yourself in the pregnancy, then it is actually normal and, and part and process of pregnancy. So I wouldn't always advise, oh, you know, you're tired, you, you must have the physics. Um, so I think it, it, it is more something for the breastfeeding ladies, but I'd still, I'd still be a little bit careful. Uh, they are very good though. I mean, my husband absolutely swears by them. He's waking up in the morning, ready for his physic. He, uh, he absolutely loves them. With um, Also, I get asked this a lot. In the, on the box, yeah. you have to consult your GP if you're going to take them. And, yeah. and it also says something like, if, you, you, if you're going to be taking them long term, you need to consult yeah. the GP, and I get asked this a lot. And the reason behind that is because, like what Ruth was saying in the beginning, they cannot test any products on pregnant or breastfeeding women. They yeah. cannot. So that's yeah. why every company has to cover their own back to say you need to individually seek GP advice. So I've got quite a few clients that have been pregnant and taken the fister, taken the box to the GP, and they've absolutely yeah. had a okay. However, yeah. I still tell each client that I speak to, you need to take that box in to get your GP consent. Yeah. And the second thing is. When people say to me, why do you need to seek GP advice if you're taking them long term? And I always say it's because if you do have an energy issue, so there's something that yeah. is meaning that you're having to constantly uh, up your energy, they need to know that there isn't an underlying issue behind that. For example, and I give this as an example, I was diagnosed with lupus, so I know why I, I suffer with tiredness. But if I wasn't diagnosed that and I didn't know, and I was taking these fist sticks to, to sort of get me through the day, mask over that, I would be covering up an issue and not be aware of it. So it's so that they know what the issue is. And yeah, if you're using them to help and your GP or consultant knows that, then fine. But if you've got a, an issue with tiredness, then the GP needs to know what that issue is. Does that kind of make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And especially in pregnancy, you know, things like anemia, you know, your low iron count, um, thyroid problems, they all come up in, in, in um, pregnancy. So you, you're completely right that you do have to just watch yourself. And I think anyway that we have to follow what doctors do and they cover them when it comes to pregnancy they cover themselves all the time and i think we need to do that as well and just be aware that you know it, this isn't just a normal normal person it's someone undergoing you know a big big thing and a big big change and we have to just err on the side of caution with with a lot of things and even though i'm saying oh you know this is okay this is okay i think moderation is still the key with everything at the moment okay um so the other thing is um, post birth when you've when you've got rid of that um, lovely baby and you've got all this um, extra extra skin shall we say 
Um, it's the firming cream, the RE9 firming cream, and this is something I'll definitely be looking into. So a lot of people have said, um, oh, you know, use the firming cream for your stretch marks. That's not what you want to do when you're um, when you've got your stretch marks and you and you're growing. What you want to do is hydrate the skin and let it grow and let it do what it needs to do. The firming cream is doing exactly what it says on the tin. It's tightening everything back up. So it's not to hydrate, it's to tighten everything back up. Um, and there's actually, it actually says there's no studies um, for the effectiveness with stretch marks anyway with the firming cream. So it comes in a little pot like so, if everyone can see, okay. Um, the other thing when you're breastfeeding is those cracked and sore nipples. Um, a few people have actually said conditioning oil, um, so I'm actually more going on on what I've seen on on what's happened, you know, and other people's advice. Um, so the conditioning oil, again, this little beauty. The only thing I would be careful of is not be putting this on just before you're about to feed, um, and maybe if you just need to just wipe it a little bit before you do feed. Um, the other thing is the little lip balms that um, that Arbon do, which are fab. Um, because if you think about it, when you've got cracked and sore lips, you put the lip balm on. You know, you lick it. It's fine to be um, to be taken. So, yeah, the lip balm seems to be a really good winner. And I'm sure it was Angela, who's a midwife anyway, which was who was suggesting this on one of the um, forums. So, yeah, it's worth a go anyway. I'll be trying them. Um, whilst all, all these are positives, I think what we need to touch on is the it's the negatives, the things that I would say are a definite no-no. And the sea source range is a big one that came up. So the Julie is part of the, um, the sea source range. And this has an algae in which can actually be harmful to the baby. It contains something called a seaweed laminaria, um, which alters the hormones and may result in fatal infections or serious conditions in both mothers and babies. So I think we, I think to err on the side of caution, I would to say them to them to be very careful or not to use it at all um so it, it is also worm a detox product and you always say no to detox products um during pregnancy and in breastfeeding because what you're doing is you're detox detoxing your body and you're stirring up lots of toxins now while these toxins are being stirred up before we can expel them um there is a risk of transferring them to baby so um no to those Um, the Genius Pads and Serum as well, they actually take, contain retinol, uh, which is a type of vitamin A, um, which we've already said, vitamin A, we've got to be really careful. So I wouldn't actually um, say yes to those until afterwards, because um, they can be harmful to baby as well. Um, a bit of advice is never to diet during pregnancy. And so I said, oh, you know, no to the protein shakes and meal replacements. And then when I was going through it the other day, Danny said, oh, what happens if people, you know, that don't normally have breakfast need to uptake their, in, up their calorie intake? Um, so I did look into the protein shakes. Um, so it can be used as, you know, if they're not eating breakfast. However, I wouldn't um, recommend that we're then changing the protein shakes for a balanced diet. Okay, so someone that skips breakfast, they're actually really good. They've got a lot of folic acid in there, 15%. And there we go, brilliant, thank you, Danny. Um, they could put the greens balance in there, um, so they have a two in one. Um, it's also very good for calcium, 15% um, of your recommended daily allowance of calcium, which is very good for the third trimester. Folic acid, obviously, for the first. It only has 12% of vitamin A, um, so we should be all right with that as well. The clear future for the, the acne um, is actually a no-no. All of that range um, actually contains something called salicylic acid um, and also the marine algae again. And it's a salicylic acid which can actually cause birth defects. So we need to be very aware of that. Um, the Aroma Essentials um, range, I, there wasn't much on the research, so what I did is actually did some research on aromatherapy in general. And what I found was um, they'd said, know if there's been a history of miscarriages in the past, or if they've had any bleeding in their present pregnancy. So 
so I would tell them to, to stay away from this range. Um, they're quite powerful. I think we underestimate how, pow how powerful these um, aromatherapy can be. And so um, they can cross the, to the placenta, so we must um, use them with caution. Other studies have had varying results. Um, if they really, really want to give it a try, then I would say just one drop at a time. Um, don't use the same oil for a long period, just use it as a little treat every now and again. Definitely after the first trimester. Okay. And again, I would give them the meet the products info and let them go away and and have a read and have a bit of research and maybe even ask the doctor themselves. On a positive note, I have found the perfume range is brilliant. <laughs> so if they want a treat and they want to buy something, then, then that's the one to go for. Um, the only thing I was going to touch on as well is just to bear in mind um, that there is the ABC baby range for, um, for after birth, which is the nappy cream, body lotion, sun cream, hair and body wash, so everything that baby would need um, for the next part of the journey. And that's it, guys. Shall I um, share some of the pictures from the RE9? Please, yeah, brilliant. Okay. Um, just let me find them. There we go. So um, I've got some photos of using the RE9 after birth. So like Ruth said about it firming your body. And that was really interesting to me because I didn't know that about when you're pregnant, you want to hydrate your body, not use the firming cream. And once you've had the baby, you want to go on to the firming cream. So here's a few pictures, so before and afters. And this lovely person here, this is actually Ella Butler, so Regional Vice President Ella Butler, and photos throughout her pregnancy. So she said that she's the ABC body oil and the RE9 firming cream, but again, knowing what we all know now, she'd probably use the RE9 cream afterwards. And there's a picture there as well, before and afterwards. So you can see it does firm up the skin. That's two and a half weeks different, this one here. And just see if any more. There we go. Sorry, I just go off a bit. So you can see the difference the RE9 cream makes. It made a big difference for me when I used it after having children as well. Mm. Jade, Jade Zanati, that's Jade there. So yeah. I have to do some of my own before and after pictures. <laughs> yeah, I do, definitely. <laughs> All right. Does anyone want to add to that about things that they have either personally or their clients have used or avoided in pregnancy? Does anyone have anything interesting they want to add? The All I can say is that clear future, that salicystic acid, whatever yeah. it was, is that yeah. not in the foot cream as well? Oh, is it? I don't know. It, it, just it, rang, it, just rang, it just rang a bell that yeah. somebody said it was in the foot cream. I might um, be wrong. No, Suzanne, it means I can't no. have my foot rubs. <laughs> <laughs> would it, I don't would know. It be, um, would it be different if it's going on your foot, though? Well, it's, it's still being absorbed, isn't it? It just rang a bell with me, that was all, that somebody... You know, said, I don't, I honestly don't know the answer to that question. I'll have to have a look and have a look on the, um, the Meet the Product site. Yeah, I've not got it. I'm just trying to think, I've got, not got my stuff up here. No, I've just I mean, I suppose it, it. it depends on how much is in there as well. Is it the Sicilic acid you're on about? Yeah. Yeah, it's in the foot cream. Is no, it? How right. much, Emma? Yeah, I don't know how much, but I just know that it's definitely in there. Right. I always say, like, just bear with me and I'll have a look at the Meet the Product. I am still listening. Gemma, have you used any of the products with your clients that are pregnant? Uh, the shoe but uh, lotion and the shower gel is a big hit with one of my best friends who's pregnant at the minute. Yeah. Um, that surprised me. I'm definitely going to use that advice going forward. Hmm. Yeah. Well, if you think though, the shea butter is very, it's very hydrating. You know, it's very moisturising. I'll put, I'll put a bit on now and see. <laughs> Just that amazing. Yeah, I always use that after I've had a fake tan and it's stopped me getting, you know, like that snakeskin effect. Because yeah. normally tans are quite drying on the skin, whereas with, when I use that, I don't get anything. 
Yeah. Mm. Great tip. Vic, did you want to add anything to that? I know you're marking away. Um, well, I'm still breastfeeding, but I do um, use the fizz sticks as well. Um, yeah. The mom's um, because she's 13 months now, I tend to only breastfeed in the morning and last thing at night, and sometimes when she wakes in the night as well. But, <laughs> but I am using the fizz sticks, but I kind of avoid the times when I'm feeding. Yeah, and you, you found they've been fine? Yeah, I can't survive without them. Good. <laughs> yeah my husband's pretty much the same now <laughs> it's, it's, well, it's better to have a fist stick drink than a, cup, than a cup of coffee and the amount of mums I know that will yeah. have like 8 cups of coffee a day and I'm like yeah. you're so much better off just switching to these drinks and then they have done so yeah you choose to do 8 a day but it's better to have 8 fist sticks a day than 8 cups of coffee a day yeah. I know someone who's in my team who's recommend or who's that her friend used the gelé. She's just, she's quite early pregnancy, so I need to pass that message on then that she should. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would just say you know everything in moderation. You know, you just give the give the facts to her and just let her decide what she wants to do. I think she's been using it for back pain. Right. Okay. She's loving it. So yeah, that's the stop. Yeah. I get really um every now and again I've um I've used it I've just had the little sample one um and I just use them because I get really achy hips and in, in the night and I just can't sleep and I found that it's it's been good. So you haven't completely stopped using it then? No, but again it is it is literally every now and again. Jen, did you want to add anything about pregnancy do's and don'ts? Oh, yeah, just very quiet. I said it's been too long since I've been pregnant, so that's what I do. But I don't really know what to advise people. I was just with my sister. Well, I thought that was really good, Ruth. I thought that was really useful. And um, yeah, we'll have to get back to people about that foot cream. I thought you delivered that incredible. I've literally took two yeah. of those. And uh, I feel more equipped now going forward, recommending to my clients that are either pregnant or breastfeeding, or even recommending to them because of their family and friends being pregnant or breastfeeding. Because obviously a lot of people buy gifts through us. Yeah. And you know, we get a lot of people buying gifts for baby showers and um, you know, babies being bought. And, and it's great to have that knowledge and information. And a lot of gift support for mums to be as well. So I really, really think that was a, such a useful training, Ruth. Good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. But I would say, you know, even giving whatever we do d decide to um, to give the pregnant ladies is just give them meet the product a um, bit of paper as well. You know, just make sure you're covering your own backs, really. Brilliant. Right, I'll stop the recording.